So this video is going to be looking at Nero's relationship with Agrippina, his mother, and we're going to be looking at coin and then a couple of written sources as well. So if we're looking at this coin here, so we've got uh, J21B, you can obviously see that we have Nero and Agrippina both on the coin. So this is kind of showing that he, uh, she sorry, has a really important and powerful influence over him. Um, and it shows that they seem to have this kind of special relationship between the two of them. Now, other women from the family, like Livia, etc., had been put on coins before, but it's never been done um, to this sort of this prominence uh, compared to Agrippina. So this kind of shows her importance in the reign, the initial reign, sorry, of uh, Nero uh, when he comes to power. It also gives you a couple of bits of evidence about um, his power. So we know he's tribune, for example, talks about him being the son of the divine Claudius. Remember, Claudius had been um, deified on death and he is the adopted son of Claudius. Obviously, Claudius had adopted him over um, Britannicus. So that's kind of like the initial impression we get about this relationship, that they're almost like co-rulers, that they are working together. Then we have a longish, it's not that long, compared to some Tacitus sources we're going to have a look at, but it's longish uh, section of Tacitus that talks through um, their relationship and how it essentially sours. <laughs> and uh, the varying plots that go against Agrippina. So... It appears that Nero has been long contemplating this. So he's been wanting to kill his mo his mother for a, a really long time, probably because he was um, unhappy about the level of influence that she was having over his life. And he wanted, he wanted her controlling nature to be gone. The sort of uh, spark, as you were, as it were, for the plots. Oh, sorry, got itchy face. There we go. Was that he was in love with a lady called uh, Poppea. And she, uh, he sorry, really wants to marry her. And the only way that he can get a divorce from his current wife in order to marry her is to get rid of Agrippina. He saw her as being in the way. And Tacitus kind of widens this, saying, you know, all men yearned for the breaking of the mother's power. None credited the hatred of the son would go all the full way to murder. So everybody kind of knew that he wanted to break away from Agrippina, but nobody really thought he would necessarily go through to actually, you know, killing her. So there's quite a few different um, plots that we have a look at. And another reason why um, Nero appears to want to kill her, according to uh, Tacitus, is the fact that Agrippina wanted to commit incest with him. Now, um, another source that Tacitus pulls on, which is uh, this guy called Fabius Rusticus, don't know who he is, says actually it was Nero who wanted to... Um, have incest but he says generally most people agree with this guy here uh, Cluvius that this was part of the reason why he wanted to get rid of her whether that's true don't know he also he brings up the fact that she had been quite um, adulterous in her marriage to Claudius as evidence to show that she would want to have sort of um, an incestual relationship with her son take from that what you will so what we do have is that Nero um, began to avoid private meetings with her if she's trying to you know commit incest probably understand why but in general terms he wants to break free from her so he decides to kill her of course as you do so he has three options uh poison stabbing or some other violence so initially he chooses um we sorry he initially wanted to poison her but um there had been a poisoning within the imperial family and Britannicus had already died sort of by accident, not by Nero's hand, according to Tassus, it just it had happened. So he's not sure that um, poisoning can control the situation properly. So he decides um, kind of not to do that. Plus, according to Tassus, um, Agrippina had been fortifying a system again by taking antidotes anyway. So poison wasn't going to work. So he decides, um, sorry, if he did stabbing, there's no way of kind of like concealing the plot because somebody might um go against their orders i might sort of inf inform on them and that's why it's also very very difficult to control so poisoning seems to be out the stabbing her seems to be out so then um a freedman of nero this guy here decides to do this kind of slightly long-winded plot which is quite amusing so they says well, well we can make a boat and we could basically sabotage the boat, design it with the sabotage in. So when it's out to sea, it can sink. And then um, basically Agrippina would drown. So that is the decision they make, is to make this weird boat. 
And this is what the next section of Tacitus is going to talk about. So he decides to lure his mother, showing that you know they'd fallen out because he's refusing to talk to her. So he shows a forgiving spirit, aim to create a room of reconciliation with Agrippina, and that she'd probably accept it because she wants to be seen as you know being forgiving as well. So she accepts the invitation to this island, um, this bayai. So she goes to the beach and they have a hug and it's lovely. And then he says, right, we're going to go for dinner. And um, and this is all to help sort of conceal the crime. So it's kind of lull her into a false sense of security. Now, it appears that Agrippina had been kind of warned of a plot and was a little bit unsure whether or not to believe the informer. However, because Nero had gone to the beach to greet her, that he had escorted it, they had this lovely dinner, that she kind of, her, her fears are, are, are laid. So she seems to be relatively happy about this particular situation, which is what this bit the source talks about. So... It's a really calm night. I'm sure you're fascinated to know that particular detail from Tacitus. And because there's no wind, the ship is taking a really long time to sail back. And then some sort of signal is given and the canopy, so that'd be like where the sail is, which has been heavily weighted with lead, so it's like designed to fall, um, falls. And it crushes um, one of the freedmen, so one of the household members of Agrippina, and he is killed instantly. Agrippina and another freedman here are saved <laughs> by sort of being able to, like, they weren't in the right place and basically they were protected by the sides and the boat did not break up as it was supposed to. So Agrippina does get wet, but she doesn't drown or get crushed. So, oh dear. So then the freedman um, raises the cry and demands aid for, them, for the emperor's mother and everybody comes to help them. And basically, Agrippina just has a few kind of like knocks and some bruises and a couple of cuts, but otherwise she's absolutely fine. And she goes back to her to villa. And here she sort of realizes that clearly the, the letter <laughs> was, as she was warned, a plot. And um, she doesn't really know what to do. And she's kind of like, right, I'm going to sit home quietly and just kind of heal my wounds before I decide on my next steps. Understandably, so she sends um, another freedman. Agamus to carry word to her son, thanks for divine kindness and fortunate star, she had survived a great incident. So she kind of then sends this letter like, oh my goodness me, you'll never believe, you know, the ship collapsed on me, but I'm okay, it's all fine. Um, she's obviously aware that Nero's probably ordered her death, but she's kind of playing him um, a little bit. So then Nero gets this message that she'd escaped with a wound from a light blow so she's been knocked over a little bit and he's terrified because he thinks that she's going to appear and want vengeance to have him killed off instead or do something else so um he calls his key teachers which i should have highlighted and hadn't so he sends in these two men it's going to be in a different color i'll do it in gray there we go so seneca is one of his tutors and so is this guy and they've been helping kind of to do run his household and kept some kind of vague control of him so he summons them and basically he kind of tells them this story about um how agrippina is going to kill him and she's got sort of designs on the throne and he wants she wants to be in charge and he kind of sells them a little bit of a, of a story so seneca and um and burris decide that if they're going to kill agrippina to get rid of this threat they could use the military to do so however um i mean they, they says that the army would be you know, would would flinch from this because they were kind of uh, attached to germanicus who had been like Britannicus's father and all that sort of stuff so they don't really want to you know um and obviously agrippina had was within the family and didn't want to have him killed and the army wouldn't want to do this because of germanicus that was a really long-winded explanation something very quite simple sorry so they say right the, the freedman instead must redeem his promise and um he's given full charge of the crime so it's basically up to him to get on with it nero's really happy because he's, he's glad he's got this kind of loyal freedman to do so and he basically sends the freedman off to go and do the deed very very quickly in the meantime this is like a bit of a saga sorry agrippina um what had happened to her especially and it was seen as an accident by most people, had become really well known and everybody was kind of like celebrating that she was was safe and happy and healthy and everything is fine. Um, and um, 
they're all set that sorry they're all really really happy cool she's stuck in her villa kind of going getting really worried because um basically nobody from her son or one of his roommates had appeared so she's obviously becoming really aware that probably her son is behind this particular plot um and her her life is in danger so um eventually the freedmen who've been sent to uh do the deed <laughs> if i didn't why well, i didn't highlight it there um there's also um a member of the military i will highlight all that in gray he, she he they turn up and that's when she kind of realizes what's going on and next she's just around the couch where she sat and they strike her on the head with a club and then they basically just stab her to death and it's all very unpleasant agrippina is now dead so Nero then goes and inspects the course and is really pleased that she's dead. Fine. She's then cremated, but not given the full rights of being deified, etc. At that particular point, it happens later, which is what's going on in here. Oh, there we go. Um, so he then tells this, sells this story still that Agrippina had been trying to seize the throne. I've been trying to be, oh, sorry, um, a co-ruler. So by telling this story to like the senate and to um the army he gets sort of adulation of centurions and tribunes um they wished him joy of escaping the unexpected danger and criminal enterprise of his mother so the story works and um he's not blamed for what happened the, you know the wool has pulled over everybody's eyes and she is seen as the danger and therefore her death is then justified um so he sends a letter to the, the senate um, and sort of the summary, according to Tacitus, is that an assassin with this weapon upon him had been discovered in this place. One of the confidential freedmen of Agrippina and his mistress, conscious of guilt, had taken the penalty of me meditated murder. So it was through a freedman and uh, nothing to do with him, and thank God she's dead. And then um, there's more justifications about um, this particular event. So she'd hoped for a partnership in the empire, for the senate, and people to submit like sort of like um, like slaves. Her foil um, um, ambition foil, she'd turned against the soldiers and she'd worked for the ruin of eminent citizens. And that's why um, she was executed, basically. That is what they're being told. He then makes an attack on the Claudians. So basically Claudius and says, you know, anything that had happened under Claudius reign that was really bad was because of Agrippina. She's a danger to the state. This is why um, it was right that she was executed. And that's. They, they do believe it. So, for example, the Festival of Minerva, which a conspiracy had been brought to light, the conspiracy, in inverted commas, was to be celebrated with annual games. So that kind of says it all. Um, there's a statue of a goddess with, of, of, of Minerva, and there's an effigy of the emperor, kind of showing that he's been protected by the gods, so on and so forth. Um, and he sort of follows all this behaviour up by recalling some um, praetors who had been banished by Agrippina. So her actions are then being undermined post-death as well. So now we have Suetonius' version of the event, and you can see it's much shorter, you'd be pleased to know. So he's a bit more succinct. So we have, again, the motives behind it. So Overwatch will over-critical eye Agrippina kept on what Nero did or said proved more than he can stand. So he was just fed up of being controlled by his mother, which is kind of understandable, I guess. Um, tried to embarrass her by frequent threats to abdicate her in retirement. Then deprived of all honour and power, including her, her bodyguard, he then um, ex expels her from the palace. So he's trying to kind of distance himself um, from her and sort of make her look like an idiot, basically. So in the end, her threats and violent behaviour terrified him, deciding she must die. I don't know what threats or violent behaviour particularly have been shown, but she, yep, he's got to die. So according to Suetonius, slightly different version of the events, he tr does try to poison her three times. But she has taken the antidote, which ties in with what Tacitus has said. So he rigged up the machine to the ceiling of her bedroom, which would dislodge the panels and drop onto while she slept. So that also fails because the plot was found out. So then he had the collapsible boat, um, which was mentioned in Tacitus. We then have exactly the same story here about why she went. So I'm not going to go through it again because it's exactly the same thing. Near in desperation, ordered one of his men to drop a dagger, Sarah Oh, I can't say that word, sorry. Serotitiously, got there eventually. Besides um, Arginius, who he arrested at once on charge of being charged, ugh, having been hired to murder the emperor. So this gives you a little bit more detail on why um, his story about Agrippina was believed. So he plants some evidence on one of, the freed, one of her freedmen. 
and that shows that she was trying to kill him. So then people obviously would then believe the story of why she was then executed. So um, obviously then everybody's really happy that Agrippina is killed and um, everyone's happy. So the army, the Senate, the people are all celebrating. Fine. She thinks he's now free of her influence. And as a result, he then decides to murder his aunt. <laughs> um, and it's a delightful story about her being in bed because of constipation, which is lovely. And then she's given a really strong laxative and then um, she, she dies. OK, cool. So we start to see, again, um, a shift in this behaviour of now the control mechanism of Agrippina is gone. Nero is going to be able to do the kind of things that Nero actually wants to do without being criticised.